What's up guys, it's Jay Lu here again. Today we're gonna discuss on my personal experience on how to convert into BJJ from wrestling. My name is Joseph Lewis. I was a former college wrestler that transitioned into BJJ and I'm currently one of the top 10 in the world at Blue Belt and Nogi. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what you need to do to go ahead and have the smoothest transition possible. Okay, before I get into the details, I'm just gonna say this. So you're a character and you got stats, like attack, defense, whatever. So let's consider it. When you're a wrestler, you're gonna be way better at taking people down and you're gonna be able to put pressure on people. And you're probably gonna be very good and have talent with passing when you start getting into jiu-jitsu. So looking at this chart, I have like four different stats that I fought with. Prove my point, top ability, smash in the person, bottom ability, able to retain guard, submission ability, able to lock in submissions, and submission defense. So let's say you're a wrestler trying to get into jiu-jitsu. So your top ability is probably like a three out of 10. Your bottom's absolute, absolutely sucks because you're not comfortable with your back at all. And then maybe you might learn how to choke somebody and you're the Hulk, and so you're the one. For me, I'm currently, like, I have a strong passing, so I'm about seven. My bottom's all right. I'm mostly more of a defensive guy in the bottom that wrestles up, so I'm more at a five. My submission ability is not that great. I mostly win by points, but I do pull off some lucky submissions when I need to. I do come in clutch quite a bit. And then my submission defense is pretty good, or I wouldn't have made as far as I have. And then my skilled guard player, it's impossible to pass the guard and they don't have the best submission defense because they don't have to worry about it. And then we have they're okay at top because once you go ahead and sweep somebody, you got to work on your top game, so it's probably an 8. And then we have a solid submission ability because in guard, it's way easier to submit guys. Like, I play guard when I'm doing so only. And then a skilled top player is like, I don't know, Andrew Tackett. Freaking 10, able to take the back and just overwhelm somebody. Has a reasonable guard still if shit goes bad can submit very consistently, and then solid submission defense, probably the highest, just because you're gonna be going through a ton of stuff. You're pretty much the tank, you're the badass. So anyway, let's, let's me show you how you're able to get your ability up to mine at least, or more balanced, balance stuff up. So the first thing I would talk about is number one, like I said, you gotta be comfortable with your back, period. Because as a wrestler, you're usually used to bellying out. If you're a freestyle wrestler, you're even worse when it comes to bellying out. Like you don't even wanna show your back. But in this situation, jujitsu, it's okay to be on your back. So learning how to get used to that and being able to just be on your side and face your opponent with shrimping is a huge thing and honestly you can pull guard and still wrestle up and it's actually very beneficial there's been a lot of jujitsu guys that came from wrestling that have a mean wrestle up guard and that's how they play things so definitely become comfortable with trying to be on your back which three different guards i'm going to talk about so you got the basic close guard that you're just closing your guard and then you got half guard which are only closing one leg. And then you got open guard where your wrestle ups come into play. So I think the main goal as a wrestler trying to get good at jujitsu at the very beginning is figure out how you can take someone's back with those three guards or take them down in open guard, but mostly try to take their back, which the easiest way to go ahead and do that is using underhooks and learning how you can get angle shrimping towards your opponent and gain that angle and taking their back that way. Especially for a smaller guy, learn the underhooks, learn how to deal with that. Tip number two, think with your head. Pretty much literally, think with your head. Um, 
what you need to do is make sure your head is protected at all times and that means having a good posture compared to a wrestling stance a jujitsu stance is a little bit more upright and you got to have more posture i made a video saying which tick downs are the best usually for jujitsu so i recommend watching that because i explained very well saying that hey any kind of takedown where your head's on the inside like a single leg or a blast double they're very effective compared to something like a high C where heads on the outside you could get guillotine. Early in your jujitsu journey you're gonna get triangled, you're gonna get choked so many times and it's because you put your head in a wrong spot and you just got caught and it's rough. I had to deal with that my whole jujitsu journey as a white belt was just taking ass whoopings non-stop and how to just get through that kind of thing. So definitely learn how to go ahead and get your head in the right position. And this is also kind of a strategy thing. So usually in wrestling, you want to just get the takedown. You want to get the three points. Now that's three points. It used to be two points, but now it's three points. But you really want to just get there. You don't want to really just take two points for jujitsu. Honestly, sweeps and takedowns really don't matter as much as people think they do in competitive jujitsu. I would consider look at getting into side control. I think the goal is to take their back or get into side control and use those strategies to get there. So, for example, if you're doing a double leg, you may want to go ahead and trap the far side leg so you can land in side control. A lot of my matches, I use a back trip for a single leg so I can go into side control when I back trip them. So, if you get a big move, make sure you get into side control and don't get caught in the close guard. Because if you get caught in the close guard, you're going to have to learn how to get out of close guard, which close guard's really hard. And honestly, like I said, have good posture and actually learn how to get out of close guard. That's a big thing at white belt is learning how to get out of close guard, learning how to pin the tailbone or learn how to pin the shoulders to pass. Tip number three. So I kind of went over this already a little bit in my last two tips, but I'm double downing on a bit of this. And this is more of the positions you want to look for as a former wrestler. And you guys are experts in a lot of these positions, so you're already going to have the feel and be able to put the pressure down on people when it comes to these positions. So you'll learn the moves eventually to transition into these positions and use them. So the number one I would go with is side control. Like I was talking about it in the last tip is pretty much find a takedown to get in the side control or learn how to pass with something simple like a knee slice or some way the pressure pass to go into side control. Side control is like pinning your opponent, so it works very well for you. Learn how to do Americanas and learn how to do Kimuras. Okay, the second one I would look for would be, it would be a back tick because duck under, stuff like that is, you're going around them, you're getting them into a turtle position or base or whatever you guys call it and you are currently gonna put hooks in and take their back and choke them. Like, that's UFC 101, man. That's like really good for wrestlers. And if you can learn that quick, your success of becoming a wrestler, like a jujitsu wrestler, goes up dramatically. And if you're, if you're a leg rider, oh, you are in luck because you can use your leg rides and still torture them. That transitions so nicely. And then the final part I would look for is front headlocks because your opponents may still want to wrestle you. And there are so many choke transitions to front headlocks that make you go ahead and get you straight into Dars chokes, Anaconda chokes, just search those two. They're, they're good from front headlock. Those are the ones you want to look for. Oh yeah, guillotines. Guillotines as well. Every good wrestler has a mean guillotine. So those three positions, get good at those. It's okay to slow down. That is the one of the things that I would say when you're starting to learn jujitsu for wrestlers, this isn't something you go 100% every single time you roll. It's not. 
Imagine you're just relaxing, playing a chess game, and you're trying to do good technique and doing good moves. And you're just feeling out rolls. Obviously, comp practice rolls are going to be a lot higher, which are more putting 70% effort. But you're not going 100% speed just because these are 6 minute straight rolls and you're going to gas. And if you screw up or something, you may accidentally hurt your opponent. When you're in the mat room, turn it down a notch. Like there's, there's Bill that has his job that he needs to go to work in the morning. Just turn it down. It's okay. We're just all trying to learn jujitsu. Obviously that you probably have different goals because you're a tough wrestler. I totally understand that. And yeah, just there's, you'll get a benefit rolling with everyone. Like, if I'm rolling with women or someone lighter than me, I try to go for other things. Like, I try to go for, I don't know, barambolos, try to take their back with something funky, or try to do some guard work. And then maybe a tougher guy, I'm gonna go ahead and throw down and take him down and put a ton of pressure on him. So, just feel out rolls and be nice, is what I'm pretty much saying. But, you know, there's a time when you might not have to be nice, but I doubt it. So anyway, that's my take on how to transition from wrestling to jujitsu. I hope that helps and like and subscribe.